Hello friends, welcome to our channel instrumentontools.com. Today in the series of real life PLC examples, we are going to see ethercat servo application using PLC. Yes friends, as the name suggests, ethercat means there will be some communication part and servo that means we are going to see the application of servo. Here on the board you can see the servo arm is moving and it is creating different patterns automatically. So there is infinite possibilities to create these patterns and this is the complete panel or wiring arrangement. Nowadays there are many projects on the servo arms like servo cloak you can search on the internet and as a hobbyist also you can make this project as a final year project or as a hobbyist also and you can create your own patterns but it is always curiosity how the system works so today we are going to see that part only so this is the complete system made by using vicon servo motors vicon plc and its vicon servo drives so this is how the complete system looks now we are going to see each and every detail about how this project works. You can see just by using a simple single PLC, we can control a lot of servo drives. This is the power of Ethercat cable. So this is the complete construction and wiring. We are going to discuss it very soon. First of all, this is the front slide, okay? So you can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 points. So you have to guess how many servo motors we will require for this. So this is the reason I am showing you this. You won't believe that this 16 points are actually controlled through, through 32 servo motors. Yes friends, you can see the numbering also. This is the 32 number and starting from 31. And before that, let me pause this. You can see the motor has two terminals. So friends, can you guess what are these two terminals and write the answer in the comments. So you can see, there were the 16 points on the front door, but we are using 32 servo drives. Why it is so? So, we will see it now. From here we can see this is the one, but actually it is not one arm. From this picture it is clear that there are two arms. So, each arm is controlled by separate servo motor. So this will be controlled by servo motor 1 and this will be controlled by servo motor 2. So in this way, these 16 points are controlled through 32 servo motors. Therefore, we will require 32 servo drives for this. And because there are some patterns that you can see over here. Right now, it is vertical only. But you can see, so these two has different movements. So that's why we have to use two servo motors for each point. So this is the things we can only come to know when we see the things from closer view. Now we will understand the wiring in detail. First of all, you can see this is the Vicon LX 6V PLC. This green cable is the Ethernet cable. So each PLC is connected through this Ethernet cable. It is looped. So what's the use of this? Here you can see in the inputs, outputs, we haven't used anything. Everything is controlled through this single cable only. Now we will understand the wiring of this servo drive. First of all, here you can see L1, L2 and L3. So this is the main input supply and uh, here we can see it is single phase only. 
so it is the main input supply given to the drive and from here you can see the main input supply is linked to each servo drive common power is coming to here and then it is looped to each and every drive so this is how we will give input power supply to all the drives now here you can see uvw so this is given to servo motors okay and this is the encoder cable coming from the servo motor that is connected over here and here ethernet cable is connected and this is the vicon vd3e model servo drive so this is how this complete wiring is done you can see the communication cable is looped input power is looped and here motor and encoder connections are done now we will see the connection to the motor side as i have asked you what are these two connections so first this is the power cable for the servo drive and this is the encoder connector because nowadays most servo motors have inbuilt encoders so this is how the servo motor and servo drives are connected as i have said earlier just by using one ethernet cable we can control all the 32 drives otherwise we have to use lot of input outputs to control each drive because as you know uh, we have to give drive enable pulse number frequency number to each drive so you can assume that there will be lot of input output wirings required but by using ethernet all complexity is reduced and the system is made simple so this is the application of ethernet now we will see the logic required to create this project so first of all we have to do communication settings in the plc and in the servo drive means in each servo drive we have to do some communication settings so what are this communication settings so you can see from here in the plc either uh, we have to manually set each of these parameters or we can if based on the plc software uh, communication blocks are already available where we have to set baud rate data length baud rate means 9600 like that 4800 and like that data length means 7 bit 8 bit parity or even parity stop bits one stop bit or two stop bits now uh, there comes a station address so this is the important thing say for example we are giving zero station address to plc or uh, one station address to plc then what will happen uh, when we are programming communication settings in the servo drive at that time in the each servo drive we will give different station address so for example if this plc wants to write some command to this drive so this drive should have unique station number then only this will be able to write some data to this servo drive so this station address is like our mobile number that we all have a unique mobile number so that is how we communicate with each other so in the same way we have to give different station number to each of the equipments connected via ethernet so for example if this want to write something over station number 10 so servo drive connected as station number 10 only will be affected so this is the important thing and last there is the timeout settings now in the communication settings of the drive there are the same things only like baud rate data length parity so we have to set these things in both plc and servo drive after that we have to write logic for how each of the servo arms will move means uh, how many degrees it will move in each step so that is the next program so here you can see as discussed earlier Uh, we can see 16 points over here but each point has two servo arms 
so this is the servo number 1 and 2 3 and 4 5 6 so in this way there are 32 servos okay so initially all the servos are like this position in the next step what will happen all the odd number of servos like 1 3 9 7 17 25 odd number of servos will move 360 degree so it will come to original position and all the even number of servo motors will move 180 degree so you can see the next step will look like this the odd number has traveled 360 degree so came back to original position but even number has traveled 180 degree from initial position so the complete pattern looks like this you can see initially it was like this after the step number two it will look like this now what will happen now next step what we want to do we want to draw one square so for that square here this arm will be rotated 270 degree so it will travel 180 degree and 270 here similarly this will travel for 270 degree so it will go to here to here now what will happen all this middle 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 uh, this middle portion all the servo drives will move for 270 degree so what will happen this will become horizontal lines the, all this middle become horizontal lines and in these four corners here here and here what will happen the number one will move for 90 degree only and here 25 will move 90 degree backwards after that this two and these two things will remain same so the complete pattern will look like this as i said this middle portion will become horizontal lines so you can see if all this rotates 270 degree that will become horizontal lines that you can see from here and the corner after that you can see this and this has remained as it is and these four corners will move 90 degree to make these corners so complete pattern will look like this after this what will happen this number four will go 90 degree back this number 12 will go 90 degree back and this 10 will become 90 degree forward so it will make the smaller square and all others will be same like this 18 will move 90 degree back this 20 will move 90 degree forward this 28 will move 90 degree forward so in this way it will become smaller squares and after that what will happen so this is the final step after this it will come back to original position so thanks for watching friends if you want to learn more real life examples like this show your interest by liking and subscribing our youtube channel meet you in the another video with another real life example